sometimes when your baby's upset, just like give them a boob, give them a bottle. It'll help. I overthought it a lot. And I think that's one thing with Holland now, the third time doing this, I just kind of like, I'm a little more relaxed with everything. Such good advice that can be so hard to follow. Hi, I'm Christy, and I'm super excited about this episode. We're talking about the topic that dominates the fourth trimester, feeding the baby. And if you're just joining us, welcome. I've been documenting my fourth trimester through audio diaries, conversations with our producer, Zach. My sister had her baby, and every yes. time I talk to her, it's like she's always feeding that dang baby. I'm like, does that baby ever stop eating? She's like, no. No, they really, that was the biggest shock to Ted. Like, I don't think people realize how often they eat. And in the moment recordings. I'm here with Holland. She is eating because that's (laughs) all she does. And she's doing a great job at it. And no surprise here, feeding my baby came up a lot. So I fed her at seven. So I wouldn't usually feed her again around 10, so I should be back in plenty of time. The appointment's at 8.30, but it's always a little bit of a logistical puzzle to go anywhere on your own when you're nursing. Worst case, I have some pumped milk in the fridge and Ted can try out a bottle for the first time. I've fed four babies now, still feeding one of them. And here's the perspective I've finally figured out and feel in my bones. How you feed your baby is not a moral choice. There isn't a right or wrong way to do it. No one knows the best way for you, but you. And whatever you decide, or what's decided for you, since for many people, formula is the only or best option, your baby will love you so much and thrive. For me, the first time around, I felt so much pressure to exclusively breastfeed my twins, Here I am reflecting with Zach about my experience as a first-time mom. I mean, when Fritz and Mark were in the NICU, my milk didn't come in for like a while. And both of them had blood sugar issues. So they were having to, you know, be hooked up to things to help like stabilize their blood sugar because they weren't getting milk. And the lactation consultant wanted me to have them place a feeding tube for Fritz before it was medically indicated because she was like, well, you don't want him to have a bottle because then, you know, maybe that will get in the rib in the way of breastfeeding. And I'm this like brand new mom to twins in the NICU with no milk coming in, like in a panic. And that's not going to help your milk come in when you're in a panic. Right. And this lactation consultant treated it like the only goal should be that I'm breastfeeding, not that just the kids are healthy and like getting the nutrients they need that I'm like recovering from birth. It was just like only breastfeeding. That was all that mattered. And when that, those are the messages you're getting, especially as a brand new parent, it's really hard to like block that out and have enough confidence to be like, just give them some formula to like, bulk them up a little bit and stabilize their blood sugar, and then we'll figure it out from then. Since having the twins, I've connected with so many first-time moms who had a similar experience of not realizing that it can take a while for your milk to come in. I cannot tell you how different of an experience it was with Wynn my second time around. With Wynn, I was, you know, still in the hospital when my milk came in, and I remember the pediatrician being like, oh, well, if you were a first time mom, I wouldn't even ask. But like, since this is the second time, has your milk come in? And I was like, yes. And she was like, oh yeah, he'll be a lot less fussy then because he's getting a lot more milk. And no one talks about that. So the first time around nursing, you're a brand new person. You have this whole new identity. Your milk probably isn't coming in yet. You don't know how to breastfeed. Your nipples have never been through this experience either. It's a whole new thing, much more painful the first time. It's like, I wish everyone could just have the second time. It's like the second time around is just much easier. Even if it doesn't go smoothly, you know what to expect and your body knows what to do. And I don't think that's talked about enough that like the first time it just is a really steep learning curve. 
In today's episode, I'm going to try to flatten that steep learning curve by sharing what I've learned. The biggest shift for me from first time mom to second was some perspective when it came to feeding. Here's where I started and where I think a lot of first time parents start. It felt like my whole value as a mom was wrapped up in whether I could nurse my twins. It was presented to me by my doctors, in Facebook groups, in a filtered way on Instagram, that it was the only and best way to connect with my babies. And at first, feeding your baby is such a huge part of your relationship with them. Either you're feeding them, they're crying, or they're asleep, essentially. Everyone wants to ask you about it, too. Always the first question is, so are you breastfeeding? In my world, at least. Yeah. I'm sure... uh, I know some places, like, in some communities, it's more bottle feeding. But, like, in my world, it's like, oh, so how's breastfeeding going? Why like, that's is the that? assumption. I don't know. I think people just have decided that that's the gold standard. And even if, even if you believe that, like, you know, babies should be breastfed, like, why is that what you're asking first? Just ask them how they are. Right. And wait and see if they want to talk about how they're feeding their baby, if they want to share that. You could ask how the baby's doing, and probably that's what the parent's going to talk about, because what they do is eat and sleep. You know, they can volunteer that. But how you feed your baby is not a moral choice, and it can be really complicated. It really matters to a lot of parents, like, whatever their choice is, they probably put a lot of thought into it. They might be grieving the fact that it didn't go the way they wanted it to. They might be loving it and it's awesome. Every parent puts a lot of thought into how they're going to feed their baby and you should trust their decision and let them volunteer how they're doing it if they want to share that information. Along with this not very helpful outside commentary, if you are in a position where nursing is an option, it can feel like all or nothing. Either you breastfeed or you formula feed. It's one of the first ways parents, and especially moms, are divided into camps. I feel like it's always framed as all or nothing. Like either you're the parent, this is like so much in parenting, Like either you're the parent who's breastfeeding or you're the parent who's formula feeding and you're like in two different camps. And it's like, but actually nothing is so clear. What I don't understand, so like same sex couples, um, couples where, you know, the woman like cannot breastfeed for some reason or the lactating person doesn't want to, like, why can't we... I don't know how to express this, but it's like people who think that breastfeeding is better, they just can't let it go. They like cannot, they're like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not saying you're a bad parent, but actually you're a bad parent. Like it's like they can't let it, this whole, when people are like fed is best to try to indicate that like, no matter what you're, as long as your kid is fed, you're doing great. Like And then there's always this pushback from the like lactation consultant world of like, oh, but like really breastfeeding. For me, combo feeding. So a combination of nursing and giving bottles with pumped milk and or formula has been the key to relieving most of the stress around feeding my babies. It lets other people help with the feeding, hooray, especially overnight, and gives them a chance to bond with the baby too. But of course, even if you think you have it all figured out, there can still be stress. Like when Holland and my right boob had a falling out when she was about two weeks old. Even when I listen back to things I recorded like right in the moment, being even a little bit removed, you can kind of forget. Like, well, I mean, you know, Holland like totally rejected my right nipple for a while. It was, I was very stressed. She actually slept fairly well for most of the night and then decided at her 4 a.m. meal that she just was over my right boob entirely, like would not latch on, super angry about it, like just kind of, (laughs) I don't know, 
nursing babies are funny. I assume babies with bottles too, like they just kind of thrust their head at your boob. They probably do that at the nipple of the bottle. They're just kind of like, they can't really see that well. They're just like, here I come. They kind of bang their head into you a little bit when they're upset. So we were trying to help her calm down and figure it out. And, you know, she's been nursing like a champ, but just was not into it. Um, so of course, super stressful. I was like, Ted was there and I was like, I assume you're Googling how you could help me. And he was like, okay, yeah. I was like yelling at Ted to Google what I was supposed to be doing. You look up, you know, you Google like baby doesn't want to latch and they're like, keep trying and try walking around with them and try it when they're tired. So I tried feeding her on the other side first and then giving her the option of the right side and that was not appealing either. So then she eventually, we just like put her back in her bassinet and she went back to sleep but she woke up at 5.45, which is quick. You know, normally she's eating about <sighs> every three hours. Um, and so I was like, all right, let's just try the right side. And again, she was just <laughs> so mad, so mad. Um, so I downloaded this app that lactation consultants in the hospital had told us about called Pacify, where you can, it seems like you can just call a lactation consultant and they'll answer in 30 seconds or so they claim. So I had that ready. Um, eventually I just let her eat on the left side first and then um, popped her over to the right and for some reason she <laughs> decided to nurse. So now, now she is asleep on my boob. Um, seems quite content and my lord I'm tired um and that was you know I think oh I just you know our first our first feeding adventure eventually we figured it out Whew, man it was a journey and also good perspective here don't hold yourself or your baby to decisions they make when they're two weeks old everything is a phase I think I also figured out at least a partial solution to the fact that Holland is not a fan of my right boob. She just does not, especially if she's like at all upset, does not want to latch on there. But I am using this Haka pump, which is just like a piece of silicone, um, kind of, it's a manual pump you can put on one side while you're nursing on the other. I assume you can also use it as a pump. And so I put that on the right side while she nurses on the left, so it kind of releases some of the milk. So it's not as aggressive, I think, for her when she's latching on that side. So that made last night better, right? Just another, right? Just another example of how breastfeeding is not actually free because you just buy all the tools and the things and you Google things late night and you're like, how can I, how can it help? So, so far I have, you know, I have a pump, I have the Haka, I have another version of new version of the Hakka that you kind of like stick in your bra more easily. So it's a little more discreet. I think they're called like ladybug collect things. Um, I got silicone bags this time to store pumped milk. Um, and then there's the whole aspect of my time, which, you know, people have qual quantified like breastfeeding for one year is the same as a full-time job, like the number of hours that you do. But there's also, so there's that part and that's important, but there's also just like the amount that you spend on Amazon to try to facilitate nursing, especially when you have a panic. Just wanted to be sure you didn't think I had everything figured out. I am still an anxious turtle a lot of the time, but back to the magic for me of combo feeding. It takes the pressure off. Why can't it be just like, these are options. Right. Not everyone has all the options. Some people, formula is the only option. Some people, they want to mix. I think that's the other thing. I've always done both combo feeding. And I feel like it's always framed as all or nothing. Baby Lark is actually the one who taught me how awesome formula can be. So wise, even as a baby. With Lark, and Fritz, I was trying to nurse them and then pump and like, who knows how much milk any of them were getting like in the course of me trying to feed two babies. And Lark was really, really fussy at night. And I, you know, we would walk her around and bop her around. And finally, I just like gave her a bottle of formula because I didn't have any other milk right then. I just gave her formula. Truly the first time she smiled. 
was after I just gave her a bottle of formula and she was like, great. And like went right to sleep. And it was like, oh, okay. Just feed the baby. But again, it can be really hard to internalize this as a first time parent who is constantly getting the message that breast is best. But once they're home, it's like all bets are off. They're eating all the time. Yeah, she was saying, like, I just fed her and she's like begging to eat more. And like, what do I do? And I was like, feed her more. She's like, I don't know if you can. I was like, Google it. (laughs) But that's the thing, right? It feels so complicated because you are like, wait, should I do that? Should I be doing this again? And like, what am I supposed to do? And I do that. I like Google schedules. I'm like, what am I supposed to be? And I've done it. This is my fourth time doing it. But honestly, I remember like, especially with the twins, they would be like really upset, like crying. crying. And I would be like, there's something wrong. And I would check all their fingers and toes for a hair like wrapped around. That's what they tell you. They're like, your hair can wrap around their finger and you won't even notice. And it's this, I don't know if that's ever happened to an actual baby, but like, that's what they tell you. And then I would just finally be like, give in and feed them. And they would be like, perfectly fine. I'd be like, they were just hungry. And I was you know, creating drama where there was no drama. The kid just wanted to eat. If there's another example to me of like overcomplicating things or like making things seem scary when they don't have to be, I think we should just be giving new parents like all of the tools without judgment and be like, here are the things that could work. You can try them. For me, just having formula in the house helps to take the pressure off. And then I can actually enjoy nursing, something I love and that I feel really lucky I'm able to do. So Ted just went upstairs to do an interview. I am nursing Holland. Wynn is painting for me. And Fritz and Lark are listening to a book read out loud to them on this app called Epic Books. Highly recommend it. So I'm just, you know, taking care of four kids. No problem, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you think your sister is eating or just sleeping on my boob? She's sleeping. She's sleeping, yeah. So far, I feel like the key to taking care of all four kids is to have two of them entertained by a screen, one of them eating, and then just one of them you are hanging with. I'm getting to hang with Wynn. Read me again. Read it again, okay. And just in case I haven't been clear in past episodes, or if you're new here, I'm a big fan of waking babies to eat during the day in an effort to get them to sleep at night. That is my number one baby sleep tip. Holland is napping, but I'm going to unwrap her because I would like her to eat soon. Because all I do is wake sleeping babies during the day to try to get them to eat more so they will sleep at night. But that doesn't mean I don't still overthink things sometimes. I just can't help it. It's who I am. Maybe some of you can relate. And it, and it has worked fairly easily for me to do it. And I really enjoy it, actually. But I feel all this conflict around, like, the amount of time that it takes and, like, the way that it means that I'm the only one feeding Holland and just the dynamic that that sets up. I feel like just because in my normal life and in Ted and my relationship, we're like really try to do things equally. I think it kind of goes against what I, my normal nature in this way that there's this dissonance because I both enjoy it and I feel like it's unfair and that like women shouldn't feel any pressure to nurse if it's not working for them. And like, I don't know, it's just this, I feel like, I have this weird conflict in my mind around it and I should probably just let that go and be like, okay, if I'm enjoying it and it's working, like I don't need to write a dissertation on it right now. I can just (laughs) breastfeed my baby and like stop when it, you know, want to stop. But I think that must be it. I think it must just be this conflict between like enjoying this time and feeling like also I should be able to share the feeding like load, I guess. Okay, a couple of other feeding related things I've experienced I want to share here in case it helps anyone listening. First, I exclusively breastfed Win up to his four month appointment. Here's me telling Zach what happened at that appointment. I think I mentioned with Win at his four month appointment, he had like fallen off the growth chart. And so I was like, 
lost confidence in my milk and was like, okay, we'll go to, we'll add in some formula too. Listen to me being so casual. (laughs) It was actually a very hard moment and I remember it very clearly. I was at the appointment with Just Win. I called Ted in tears. When we got home, we tried some formula and it seemed like he had an allergic reaction to it. So then we went back to CVS and got some really expensive hypoallergenic formula that smelled like Cheetos. At his five month weight check, he like still wasn't on track. Finally, by six months, things were looking better. He also got cleared of all those allergies, which was such a relief. So we went back to standard formula. It's really hard to have perspective that these things will work out unless you've been through it. So I'm sharing my stories here to try to help you believe that you'll get through feeding challenges. And then maybe you'll be like me, heading into Holland's one month appointment with that perspective. We're getting ready to take Holland to her weight check. So the goal is that your baby is back up at their birth weight by this two week appointment. Um, So, was a little anxiety before it, but she seems to be growing. And like, one thing that is very nice about doing this now, fourth baby, is I don't feel as, like I'm I'm exclusively breastfeeding her right now, but we actually just got some formula, so we have it on hand. And it's like, if things are not going well, I feel less angsty about combo feeding, because that's what's worked for us. So we'll just like, give her some formula or I'm pumping milk. So we'll give her some bottles and we'll just hope this little lady is growing. (laughs) And let's talk pacifiers. Love a pacifier. I think there's also a stigma around pacifiers. There is. All right. I'm going to find a pacifier. Yeah, there are two in the Not on the outside, but on the inside, on the side. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the doctor will say something like, Oh, you're using a pacifier? And we'll, say, yes. and we'll say, yes, we love them. They're the best. <laughs> I will say that if she says it. Oh, no, she said it last time with Wynn when he had one. She was like, oh, I guess I'm okay with that since he's back at his birth weight. And I was like, okay, thanks. Well, Wynn never really took a pacifier. That was more wishful that thinking. Was that was a deep thing. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, the there's a theory that like if you use a pacifier with a breastfed baby too early, it can cause issues, and you should just be like nursing them, not using a pacifier. But um, not everyone agrees with that, and we don't agree with that. It has not caused problems for us. At these baby friendly hospitals, it's like no pacifiers. I've like snuck them in in my hospital bag, and I don't know who I think is gonna like go through my hospital. I like put them in the innermost pocket of like my suitcase. Like, oh my god they're not gonna know um well is it a theory or a scientific fact like i feel like if it was a fact no one would do it no i think it's not i mean i think just different babies have different preferences and nursing is harder or easier for different people and like i get so there's like the nipple confusion thing is more like My understanding is bottles can be easier. So if you have a, if you're bottle feeding and nursing a baby, they can just get a preference for a bottle because it's like the milk comes right out. They don't have to work as hard. And so I think that's can potentially mean that a baby like develops a preference for a bottle. We did not have that problem either. Our kids have bopped back and forth without an issue. Oh, milk? Yeah, and I don't I don't know why a pacifier would like interfere with nursing except because if a baby's hungry, if our babies are hungry, they're not like, "Oh, sure, a pacifier instead." I'm not hungry anymore. I'm not hungry. I'm they're like, "Oh, I'm so satisfied her. now." <laughs> no, if they're hungry, they just keep yelling and we feed them, but sometimes they just it's a soothing thing for them. So, um, Holland seems on board with it. In the end, I've just trusted the NICU nurses that help take care of Fritz and Lark when it comes to pacifiers and nipple confusion. You know, this is another thing, this like nipple confusion thing. The NICU nurses were really helpful to me on this because the lactation consultant was like, oh yeah, no, no pacifier at all. You don't want them to be confused. And the NICU nurses were these like great older ladies who had been at it for, you know, 30 years and were kind of like rolling their eyes and were like, it's okay. 
like you can give a pacifier and it's gonna comfort your kid it's like they make babies feel good they can suck on a pacifier and like but it hasn't caused my kids any problems did anyone else give birth at a baby friendly hospital i remember being so happy that i was at one when lark and fritz were born i mean who wouldn't want a baby friendly hospital now my perspective has shifted I think we've gone a little too far in one direction. Great band, by the way, as Zach and I are talking about here. I feel like there was this move toward breastfeeding that went like so dramatically in one direction. And with like these baby friendly hospitals, as they're called, the baby friendly hospital is all about breastfeeding. And like facilitating breastfeeding when you have the baby. So it's like rooming in instead of having a nursery, no pacifiers, encouraging breastfeeding, these lactation consultants. And I think it just framed as the only choice, like not having formula samples available. It's framed as the only choice, the only good choice, and that everyone, that should be what they're planning on doing. And if you don't do it, it's because there was some problem and you need to like explain it, right? Instead of just, you don't have to justify breastfeeding, but I feel like people have been made to feel like they need to justify using formula. I think we need to move toward being family friendly thinking about everyone, and giving new parents support for whatever choice is best for them. If it helps, you should imagine that I am here, validating and cheering on your choices, because I am! I am cheering you on and you are doing great! And soon, your relationship with your baby will grow in new and wonderful ways. Feeding them will become a smaller and smaller part of that relationship. Holly's nine months old now, and she's eating scraps off the floor, so that's where we are. Next week, we'll be talking about going back to work, something that happened sooner than expected for me. I was just listening to a sound clip from you and you were like, I need to really figure out how to nurse and do meetings. I need to figure out how to work while nursing. I can kind of be on my phone, but I can't really figure out my computer um, yet. So once I master that, it'll be golden. And she'll also get stronger and hold up her head and everything. I keep forgetting how early it is that I'm, you know, back somewhat to work. And here you are. I'm a pro. No problem. You're doing it. Um, Yeah, she's, I don't know if you can like hear her nursing. She's actually a pretty loud nurser. So I would have her, everyone's like, who, because I can angle the camera strategically, but it's like, what is that sound? (laughs) I actually realized once I started having to pump on conference calls when I was at the law firm. I was like, oh, that's what that sound is on the background of calls. Like other people were doing it. I just didn't even register what the sound that like. Uh, And then I started, I was like, oh, because people would unmute themselves and start to talk and you would hear that. We're all just pumping in the background, multitasking. Yeah. Talk soon. Glass bottles. Did you switch to them? I did. And what is your experience? (laughs) Well, at first it was like, they're a lot heavier and so I think it was like a bit of a adjustment for Holland she was kind of like I don't know because she'll like reach up and like grab it so I think it was like straight and they're a lot bigger we got big bottles but overall good okay I feel like it was a good a good choice better for the environment so supposedly much better. better yeah good small steps I'm happy to hear that I'm gonna really tell that on this podcast <laughs> Glass bottles. Glass bottles. But not reusable diapers. No, I'm sorry. No, that really is, it's incredible the amount of diapers we go through. Today We Tried is brought to you by Clugo, a baby gear brand founded by parents for parents. I'm your host, Christy McGregor, and our incomparable producer is Zach Walker. Come back next week for more tales from the fourth trimester. And in the meantime, remember... You got this. So I guess it is like, even you still if you're in your it. fourth, you're still yeah. like, what do I do? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah.